Morning everybody. John Saunders coming to visit. Uh, what are we doing today? Going to see Camp Leet and Mill Terra, which I've heard cool things about. Yes, all right, come on, let's go. And we're actually gonna film a podcast in the car, so check out that video too. And I looked over, we've got like camera gear, batteries, cables, cords. GoPro right there. And I looked at Grimsdale's pocket and I saw the saga. I have never touched it yet. Oh my god. Oh my god. It is a it's a fidget tool. Yep. This, this is this is a newer one. Yeah, I this actually like the first my mom came to visit for a couple weeks, so I actually gave her mine. Um, so I was without for a couple days and the guys in the shop were like unacceptable. So they found enough farts to throw one together. And... Best way to get a saga, be, be Grimsville's <laughs> mother. <laughs> Ooh, black ink. I feel like you always see blue. Mm. I like that. Oh, that's really nice. Cool. That's really cool. I like it. So essentially the company, the whole story started with uh, three guys that were at uh, the University of Waterloo, so literally just down the street. Uh, so that was Mike, Paul and Neil. So all three are still involved in the everyday business. Um, so at the time, if you got a picture, 20 years ago, they were working, some of them on their PhD to do cylinder head porting. Oh. Okay. All right. So if you picture 20 years ago, being able to digitize a cylinder head port yeah. and then create, fit a best surface on it, generate toolpath, post it out and do verification 20 years ago, that was out of this okay. world, yeah, right? right? So that, that was basically what they were working on. So I'm sure you've seen that one at Hermley. I know, this right? is, is this the part? So that is the part. So it was all done and programmed here. And uh, we spent about a week at Hermley setting it up in Germany. Okay. And uh, awesome. and then we cut it there as one of the demo parts. Look at that Grimsbo. Oh, it's engraved on the inside. Yeah, so still do a lot of work there. Show up, um, fix, Hermelay. Yeah. That's sick, Umugi. Yeah, we do have a lot of custom work that we're doing really geared towards motorsport industry. So that went into, that's an intake, manifold intake for a Ford GT40. Really? Yes. This, this was solid, one solid block. That was one solid block. Um, and then How same thing. Intake? Oh, because that's cold air intake, right? Yes. Yeah. Because you yeah. take the, it doesn't have to be. Uh, that went into a I Shelby GD500. So that thing came out at 1,200 horsepower. So we've done two of those. Uh, one went into the car and that one. So if you put your hand into the intake, the whole inside is done with all the, the flow line. So yeah, you can so feel it. it. Yes. Here. Yeah, you can feel it. If you move the blade, yeah, yeah it is bolted down, but you can, you can feel it. <laughs> <laughs> That's really like the, the one-offs uh, type of work. Uh, still do a lot of um, aero parts, so wind tunnel parts. So that went, oh, yeah. that's the front wing for a Indy. So that Scale came, down. that is no intervention whatsoever. It. it came off the machine like that. Which machine? Except somebody polished it. No, no there has been polished. zero polish. <laughs> what kind of machine? Uh, HPM 800. I'll show you. It's in the back. I might there. So okay. that, that's really what five axis machines are for. Um, it's really about being able to leverage what the machine is capable of doing. That's a variable intake turbo. So oh, I love how you put the pattern toolpath on the yeah. outside. Yeah, the, the like, fake knurling. Yes, just on the engraving <laughs> itself. So we really try to split uh, the everyday into uh, lights out production at nighttime and over the weekends and during the day uh, we try to keep the machines available for the guys to do the one-offs, two-offs. Um, this was 21 minutes? Yeah. What? <laughs> what? That's insane. Dude, CMM in the cell. Oh, that, that's really, you know, we're very good. Actually, 
the latest guy that we that just got started on Monday came from Australia. That's how far back we have to go to get the right people. So now we're walking into another building in Milterra. Check this out. They have tool grinders. So it's rotating the end mill and checking the high points and everything. And it's dark in there because it's like a light room. Yes. There it is. And then it gives you the inspection report. It probably prints it out or keeps it digital or whatever you digital need. Digital copy of it, yeah, exactly. So you guys basically go, man, I wish that tool existed. And then you're like, well, let's, let's just do it. Yes. <laughs> yeah, or delivery or specific requirements that we need. I just want to grab a second. Introduce you to Nathan. This hey, is a really, really big fan. Oh, awesome. Yeah, really, your channel's really helpful when you're just kind of starting off in machining. I used to work at a, at a university doing kind of like machine shop kind of stuff, uh -huh. and it was really handy to uh, awesome. have some tutorials on cool. modern machining techniques. That was really helpful. Do you work here now? I do now. What yeah. do you do? I am a uh, tool and grind engineer. It's awesome. Yeah. <laughs> so all this piping here runs into the next room. All right, so the way this works is the ro these are pre-ground? We do that grinding here. Okay, oh, okay. So, so you you rough it out here, yep. and then it goes to here, and yep. then the robot goes, okay, I gotta make 42 ball end mills, yep. and just goes, burp, burp, puts it in, finished one's probably down there. Exactly. And then and then the guy takes the tray out, puts the next one in, exactly. keep it running. Yep. So, yeah. so what, what's in the piping? That's oil. So that's the waste oil, that's, that's dirty oil. Okay. That's flowing down out into the next room where the chillers are. The oil is filtered, submicron filtered and chilled and then returns on the high pressure lines down here. So all these the machines, machines are tied in? These the are all tied in. Okay, all the yeah. grinding machines are? All the grinding machines okay. are tied into, well, two units that process all of the joint okay. dirty oil. So I am in a room that grinds end mills with three experts that grind end mills. And check this out. So they mounted up my knife on an end mill inspecting machine. So we can look at the surface finish. I'm getting some weird chipping and streaking on my part. Look at that, you can see it clear as day. I'm talking about the side to side. There's one there and there's a couple there. And those drive me nuts. So we're just talking over uh, tooling advice and parameters and stuff while John is over there uh, nerding out. I haven't seen that yet. Matsura LX160, oh my God, look at this thing. What the, what? So this machine is super duper sweet. Linear, magnetically driven motors, lots of tools, actually not as many tools as I expected, maybe 30 or 50 or something like that. Multi-pallet changer, holy cow, look at this. Probably 80 pallets or more. Look at this, guys. A solid carbide ground blade. How cool is that? Start the machine, walk away, trust it, know it, everything's dialed. I love it. So I'm looking at this guy right here. This looks like a bore. My brain's not working right now. Obviously it measures the size of the bore, but it's electric, so it's tied back to something. I'll have to ask them about that. They were telling me all these crazy, like they make turbine impellers, all these crazy ways that they have to do everything to make it perfect. I can't even, I can't even talk about it. But every machine is tied into a central uh, project management system. So the screen right here tells this machine, these are all the jobs that have to be run on this machine next and that's commanded by central command or whatever. Every machine has their system, everything knows what's going on. You got paper filters on the machines, which filter the coolant. Really cool. This thing is huge. Oh, I hadn't noticed, you've got different, um, yeah, different size tables and stuff like that. Oh, this whole thing opens up. We're big fans of a vice like that. This has, um, keeps your part off the table. You can... Keeps your part off the table, but has massive um, clamping force with a hydraulic um, magnifier. This is 40, yeah, this is 40 Wait, really? kilonewtons of clamping force. 
This is basically like, uh, you know, the um, a lot of people use lang vices, right? So you stamp, you pre-stamp yeah, the material sure. in a hydraulic vise, then you yeah. put it in a lighter weight vise. This is effectively like a lang clamping unit as a vise. It so generates so through. much force. Yeah. Literally a kid in a candy store right now. I will take one of these. I'll take one of those, one of those. I don't know what this is. It's like, I feel like, I feel like my parents just left and I have the place to myself. All right, so we got a Matsura MAM 7235V, 35 pallets, can run unattended. They, they literally run 24 seven. Automatic pallet changer comes in here, finish part, robot loader. Let's take a look, it's lights are off. Oh, there we go. How beautiful is that? Saunders Norseman Review. I've been carrying it for probably nine months now, every day, and you know, I don't abuse it in the sense that I wouldn't pry bar with it, but I'll open screws with it and I'll open up packaging with it, and I've definitely damaged the edge some, so I'll get a little cleanup here today, hopefully. Um, and it's cool to see, I hadn't really noticed it until we were looking today, but I've worn you know, the tiniest of wear shine marks there, but it's really held up, you know, it's great. Flip it over. Yeah, we did this uh, SMW engraving on it. Love it. So what do you think of this place? This is cool. <laughs> this really cool. place is nuts. Uh, yeah, the automation, the, the mind, like just talking about uh, workflows of batch versus one piece versus right. how do you integrate automation in night runs? Yes. There's so much knowledge here. I just want to live here. I brought my sleeping bag. <laughs> Like you've never seen pizza before. Come on. <laughs> the thing I love about the Mangrum smell is Matsura Crate came out with it in 91. What? Like everyone else is like new you know, automation work and <laughs> just like, dude, bro. Yeah. That's what we've been doing. And, and you can see it right from, you, you see, he loaded the part and it took him about 25 see, seconds to see it. This is the kind it. of stuff like, we're all here having fun, blah, sure. blah, but like, like this is a no BS moment. Like you, yeah. the fact that you can tell me that's not gonna be a good tool path yeah before i like that's you've got it? full attention this is insane so we we cut apart on our haas trunnion and i wasn't happy with it and we put it in master cam and i still we weren't actually i don't remember how we did that but um we had the sample file here from fusion we pulled it up and they said here's why that's not going to be a good tool path and they looked at the load and the so access explain to me what this load yeah. thing is so we can see here so we're doing we're doing a swarf toolpath around the outside of the square object. Exactly. And and if we zoom in on this this position right here, we can see the ax C axis is actually going to change directions here. Yes, it's with the jerk uh, the yeah. Yep. So you're, you're having a dwell mark and you're having a so like with Especially with the dual monitors, you can look at that, you can scrub through it, and you can watch this kind of jiggle around. Show me. Yeah, exactly. So it brings me to the outline line of the program, so I can just step through the program line by line and I can actually see the machine jiggle right there. Like, Amazing. And like this is, I take this is no BS. Like I actually struggled with this part and we, we, we were do talking off camera here and they pulled up there like, no, that would not be, like they knew it wasn't this like, oh, marketing thing. Like that's real. That's so cool. Mm. And then the other benefit of this, aside from creating a small to smooth tool path is to, um, what were you saying, equalize tool load? Yes, looking at the, the volumetric material removal rate. So essentially looking at how much material we're removing over time and look at where the tool is engaging in the material, where there are opportunities to, to increase faster, feed yeah. rates. And where you need to slow down. Exactly, yeah. exactly. Looking at how the, the, the actual physics of the cut, what is happening at the contact between right. the tool and the material. This is bonkers. <laughs> So that was our tour of Miltera and Camplete. Honestly, I didn't know too much about Camplete before other than that it's like a verification software, but it's so much more than that. Oh my goodness. It's, it's everything. I don't even know how to explain it. Okay, explain real, real quick, give me the pitch. All right. What Camplete is and does, 
we spent the past three hours solid talking sure. about it. I wrap, I had to round it down, yeah, but yeah. but distill it for me. Uh, in in a one sentence, that would be a universal post processing and verification platform for dedicated machine tools okay. or dedicated to specific machine tools. So I create a tool path in, in any of the software in that you any, like. Any typically software. five axis or complicated layers. Yes, exactly. So whether it would be Mastercam, Esprit, Hypermill, Fusion, PowerMill, really any right. of the leading CAM systems on the market. So you're really able to leverage the best of every CAM system and always have a proven consistent outputs for a specific machine tool. So the output is really tailored towards a specific machine tool. And, and that's really where we're controlling what is happening at the machine level, not at the software. So you showed me program. the demos. You yes. take the code, you put it into TruePath. Mm -hmm. the, machine the machine model is there. It moves in every axis, everything. Even the code reads on the control panel on the machine. <laughs> it was insane. And you're obviously looking for collision avoidance, uh, crashing, yep. things like that, but also like errors in the code, like, oh, you forgot to put this thing in here. Yeah, and, and that's exactly it. So it's really centric around the code itself. Right. Uh, that the code is really the, the essential factor that's going to drive everything else. And, and that's really where we've seen a lot of customers getting into 5-axis struggling with is to get good code, which right. is something we're going to be providing to them and then making sure that this code is going to be running on the machine, that the machine will be capable of running that in a safe way exactly. without having unexpected results. And really ultimately looking at it from a process perspective and say, we have code, we know this code is going to run safely. How can we do things better? What yeah. is the machine's behavior that we can optimize to ultimately yeah. get a better part? You're showing all these crazy optimization things that show like the graphs of the toolpath and the cutting loads at every single point. Yes. Oh, it was. <laughs> Crazy. That was a lot I, of fun. I had no idea. Um, so yeah, yes, awesome. it, it's uh, it's a post processor on steroids. It is. <laughs> so like right now we have the text based post processors coming out of Fusion, which for my lathe I have to edit like crazy. You guys have a post for your lathe, so I could edit code from a lot Fusion fast. a lot. Yeah. <laughs> Or not at all. I know. Or not at all. <laughs> but especially for complicated five axis things, this becomes completely like mandatory almost. Oh, like it, it if, absolutely is. If you want to make money and run parts and just go and trust, then this and, is the and, and that's really what you have to do. Going from a three axis to a five axis right. machine, there is more to it than simply adding two axes. You have to look at the fixturing, you have to look at the yes. tooling, you have to look at the tool pathing. And, and those machines and tool path themselves are getting so complex that you can't get away with, I'm just going to fix it at the machine. You're not going to be able yep. to do your 3D cutter cop, your tool center point, um, all of those advanced functions that are driving the five axis world, you're not going to be able to do that at the machine. So you have to have some sort of a CAM system in place, which ultimately will require a proper output from that CAM system to the machine. And that's really that gap that we're bridging to really right. make sure that whatever you're using is going to be something that's useful for you at the machine. That's awesome. And I mean, the Miltera shop was nuts. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. From, from what it's I understand, crazy. it started out as like their playground. Like yes. we do verification yeah. software, let's get a machine, let's play on it. Let's, let's own the chain. Exactly. Right? Yeah. Let's make sure yeah. we're not and then they're like, talking to talk. This is fun. Let's get another. Wow, we're getting really good at this. Right. Yeah. And that, that's just, exactly it. The turbine Until turbine it grew stuff. into its own, right. its own thing. So right. Camp Lead for 20 years, Miltera for 10, 10 years. Correct. And the future is bright. Yes. Cool. All right. Exactly. Oh, it's a lot, it's going to be a lot of fun. Awesome. Well, thank you for having a lot us. of us. Yeah. <laughs> oh, very yeah. welcome. Yeah. It's been a, a fun, fun adventure. All right. Take thank care. you. Thanks for watching, guys. Take care. Bye.